Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how a gentleman can globetrot without looking like a tourist. The American wit Mark Twain once remarked, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And we fully support the joys and wonders of travel and encourage all men who are able to do so to go and explore this wide, wonderful world of ours. But as the modern American wit Russell Baker observed, the worst thing about being a tourist is having other tourists recognize you as a tourist. Now that's why in this video we'll explain how a gentleman can tour a new place without sticking out like a sore thumb. Now you may not be mistaken as a local, but you will be recognized as a gentleman of classic style. Now obviously there's nothing wrong with being a tourist, or dressing like one if that's what you really want to do. Now it's your vacation, so within reasonable limits, the choice is yours. But there are several reasons a gentleman will probably not want to look like a tourist. Now it's hard to feel like a sophisticated cosmopolitan when you're dressed in socks and sandals, a utility vest, and a bucket hat. You might feel like you're missing out on an immersive, genuine experience during your visit. You could also give the impression that you don't care about local culture. Now, this could make it more difficult to meet people and enjoy yourself like a local, if that's your goal. Now there are also practical concerns. Vendors and restaurateurs may be more inclined to rip off a tourist. Tourists are more likely to be hassled by scammers and street peddlers, or even targeted by pickpockets or muggers. And occasionally, foreign visitors can also be subjected to violence or harassment. Now, for your own self-confidence and ease, it might be best to dress like a classy gentleman rather than a tourist. And here's how to do it, starting with a very obvious suggestion. Now, first off, don't dress like a tourist. Now, we probably don't need to emphasize this to our viewers, but it's important if you're taking a vacation, you don't take a vacation from classic menswear. But we acknowledge that it's important to stay comfortable when on your feet all day, so this video is going to aim to help you find a balance between comfort and style. Remember, no matter where you go, there are some places you will stick out like a sore thumb no matter what you do. Now, we can take a look at a vast majority of historical sites around the world and see a sea of tourists who are dressed in clunky shoes, athleisure, and baseball hats. Now, to avoid being mistaken as a part of the tourist horde, you'll want to avoid the following. Number one, athletic and athleisure attire. Now, this one's actually pretty tough for me as well because I always find this to be very comfortable and I love wearing it all the time. But it's important to remember that this product is actually too casual often to be given a good first impression. And in many regions, including Europe, Eastern Asia, and the Middle East, this is often not worn except for people who are actually exercising. Now, a similar assessment can also be made for other combinations like t-shirts and shorts. Now, a good alternative to this would be a smart casual or a resort casual. Next, locality branded items. Now, non-local logos, places, and emblems make it clear you're a visiting tourist. Now, your beloved college sweater might be the most comfortable thing that you own, but you're not likely to run into other alumni running through the villages of Nepal. And patriotism is always admirable. But you'll not be taken for a local if your clothing is festooned with your native flag. And while some sports teams have international renown, that St. Paul Saints cap might stand out pretty badly at Cuba's Estadio Latino Americano home of Los Leones. Now, of course, you also don't want to go too far in the other direction. Unless it's game day, only a tourist would be decked out entirely in black and orange and a Sunrisers cricket jersey. Casual clothing is popular for being comfortable, but you can certainly be comfortable in the classic style. So skip the hybrid shoes and go for a broken in pair of walking shoes that are stylish and comfortable. Now Raphael likes boat shoes, maybe even a pair of sneakers in the right circumstances. And consider trading the baseball hat for something that suits the weather, like a Panama hat. Now speaking of the weather, don't assume that you have to wear a tank top to beat the heat in warmer climates. Natural fibers, light colors, and removable layers will keep you feeling light and cool. Check out our warm weather outfits and summer suits videos here for more information. Similar tips can be gleaned from watching our videos on cold weather gear. And while it's great to be prepared, don't get lost in the experience of shopping for a trip. Knitting yourself out entirely for a trip to the Swiss Alps in North Face or Montclair with things with the tag salon is an obvious way to stand out like a sore thumb. As will buying a cartoonish safari outfit, complete with a pet helmet just for your outdoor adventures in Brazil or Manassas. For any trips requiring specialty gear, go with the information provided from guides. Don't go for what seems cool or trendy. So rather unsurprisingly, not dressing like a tourist is a great way to not look like a tourist. And we also recommend that you don't accessorize like a tourist. Few things are more touristy than a traveler who's weighed down by excessive baggage, that dreaded fanny pack, and camera bags. However, there's only so much you can do to avoid that. 
And when it comes to packing, it's important to remember things like quality over quantity, versatility, and of course, adaptability. Now this will serve you well and keep your luggage to a minimum. Now many of the carry-on packing tips we provided in this video for business travel can also be adapted for pleasure travel as well. And this video will teach you how to pack a suitcase like a professional. But don't forego overpacked luggage just to make way for an overpacked personal bag. Now massive rucksacks and backpacks are often associated with tourists. And not only do they look bad, they also earn the ire of many locals when they smash into people from being too big. Now some regions have even banned them on public transit and in certain areas. So rather than hauling around a backpack, consider bringing a quality messenger bag. It's more stylish, discreet, and harder to steal from. Now just keep your bag close to your body and within sight in chaotic situations and in big crowds. Now similarly, unless you are a professional or devoted amateur photographer, you probably don't need to travel with several camera bags. A utility vest filled with extra lenses and a camera continuously slung around your neck. Now most cameras can be discreetly and safely tucked into your messenger bag when not in use. And most don't require a massive amount of accessories. After all, if you're hauling most of the Leica catalog, you're more enticing to thieves. Now selfie sticks are also a dead giveaway that you're a tourist, no matter how important it might be for the gram. And finally, keeping valuables in a fanny pack isn't much safer than a wallet. And this will immediately identify you as a tourist. Instead, we recommend a gentleman carry a classic wallet or billfold inside an interior jacket pocket for most items. And invest in a slim money belt to protect extremely valuable items. Now ideally, valuables can usually be stored inside a hotel safe. But when you have to travel with them, a money belt is ideal. Now it's worn under your clothes, so it's nearly inaccessible to thieves. Now to ensure a low profile, make sure you only use it to carry things like an emergency credit card, large bills, plane or train tickets, or your passport. Now do not use a money belt as a wallet replacement. If you cram wallet contents into a money belt, it will start to create a bulge around your waist and ruin your outfit lines. Now this makes it very obvious and also defeats the entire purpose of the money belt. Now you don't want to be that guy buying a matryoshka Godal in St. Petersburg with his hands down his trousers grasping for the family jewels. Now to get that image out of your mind, let's look at some other things you could wear. Now let's look at go-to travel garments and shoes. Now to help get your quality travel ensemble started, here are a few of our suggestions. Now some of my favorites are going to include a tailored navy blazer. Now this is one of my favorite items to bring with me on a trip. Now you may not know where you're going to be going for dinner or if you're going to be meeting with colleagues, but this jacket will literally have your back covered. Next, a dark wash denim. Now for me, this is a bit of a must have. Now these are casual, but could also be dressed up by wearing it with a nice leather dress shoe, dress boot, or even the occasional sneaker. Now adding a trim shirt or sweater, depending on the weather of course, is a great way for you to look effortlessly put together. And next, I always like to have versatile shoes with me. Now I know this sounds broad, but for me this means clean, timeless, and neutral shoes. So a pair of leather or canvas sneakers for casual outings in something like a black or a white color. Or a black or brown leather dress shoe or Chelsea boot. Some of Raphael's travel favorites include boat shoes. These are comfortable enough for all day walking and can be worn barefoot in warmer climates. Next, seersucker shorts and trousers. Now, these are lightweight, classy looking, and perfect for warm to hot climates. Shorts will keep you looking and feeling refreshed without having to resort to cargo shorts. Now trousers can be dressed up with a fresco jacket for dinner or dressed down with a polo on a casual day. And next we have the Panama hat. Now this is a true must have in hot weather. Even if you're not visiting Panama, or Ecuador, which is actually where they're from. Next, we have the Safari Jacket. This is a fun look that provides ample storage for any all-day adventure. And finally, a dark trench coat. It's long, so it covers well, has a removable liner, and is a spot-resistant color. And for climate-specific concerns, we have warm weather clothing and accessories. Now first, we have linen. Now this fabric helps you feel and look cool no matter what. You can always consider pants, jackets, or shirts in linen. There are polarized sunglasses. Don't miss any of the sights on your trip from glare or squinting. Next, sport shirts or polo shirts. Now this is a better option than a t-shirt if you want to have short sleeves. And of course we have cold weather clothing and accessories. Search for quality outerwear that fits the occasion. Now overcoats are great for most occasions. Less bulky single breasted options and wool for more elegance. But you can also go more casual. Check out our seven casual jacket video here. Easily transition from the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful by layering. And of course we have gloves. Nothing ruins a vacation faster than frigid fingers. And don't forget a quality scarf. 
Now this versatile accessory will keep you warm and add a pop of color to a rather drab outfit. Now when planning your outfit, it might help you to not look like a tourist by blending in with the locals. Now when planning your trip, looking at restaurants and checking out different hotels, take a look to see how the locals dress. Unless of course this isn't important to you and maybe isn't your goal. Check out travel logs on YouTube or even photographs of the area you plan on visiting. Now try to determine if locals tend to be more practical or more dressy. Do they wear different clothes for work and for play? Do they dress differently for day and for night occasions? Do they dress up for things like dinners or cultural occasions? Now this step is important because local dressing customs will vary from place to place. The people of Paris, Texas dress a little bit differently than the people of Paris, France. And what you might be wearing in Dublin might vary a little bit differently from what you might be wearing in Dubai. Now for example, you might be able to get away with a glitzier outfit on the French Riviera or in Macau rather than in Oslo or in Washington DC. That'll make a suitably bold or a more subdued first impression, check out our dinner jacket guide here. Now keep in mind customs can also vary in the same city. Now this kind of research is a fun way to make sure that you blend in to wherever you plan on visiting. And while it's good to fit in, that among all these foreign fashions, there are some things that you do want to avoid. Avoid cliches and wearable kitsch. Now when planning your ensemble to fit in with the locals, it's important to manage expectations about modern styles of dress. Now a seersucker suit and black tie ensemble is not mandatory to visit the historic homes of Natchez, Mississippi. Now if you're too overdressed, you'll stand out, just as much as the tourists who want to walk around in Mickey Mouse t-shirts. Although in our opinion, you'll look a little bit better doing it. While on vacation, you should also avoid local clothing articles that are either parodies or kitschy. Mexico City is a culturally rich metropolis with thousands of years of history. And you're not going to convince anyone that you actually belong there by wearing a massive sombrero that has Viva Mexico woven into the brim. Now everyone likes mementos and keepsakes from the places that they visit. But avoid buying and wearing touristy kitsch like novelty headgear, clothing, or accessories. And while the hipsters in Bushwick might be doing it to be ironic, most New Yorkers don't wear I Love New York t-shirts. And your trip to the Louvre won't be improved by a dabbing Mona Lisa sweatshirt. And finally, on a more serious note, it's important to remember that some clothing articles have a deeper significance. Whether it's a Scottish clan tartan or a kente cloth from Ghana, historical garments are more than just fashion pieces and should be treated accordingly. Now this doesn't mean you can't buy or wear articles like these, just that you should understand their meaning and significance. Now thus far, most of our tips have been revolving around things that we often talk about here at Gentleman's Gazette. So when planning your vacation outfits, all you need to do is account for itinerary, dress code, and the weather. And watch the relevant videos from our expansive video library. But in conclusion, during your trips around the world, it's important to remember another gentlemanly trait, respect. Respect local culture and traditions. Now visiting another country is like visiting another person's home. They should be polite and respectful to your host. In a foreign land, this includes being aware and attentive to local dressing customs. Now in some countries, more modest and professional attire might be required when out in public. You might not be allowed to walk down the street in your speedo, even if you are going to the beach. Keep in mind dress codes for special events like concerts or dramatic performances. Now you don't want to be the only person in Tokyo's National No Theater wearing cargo shorts. This guide will help you navigate any dress code effectively. Now dress codes are especially important at religious sites. Now in sanctified spaces, you might be required to do things like cover your head, or remove your shoes, and avoid clothing that bears your legs or torso. Research requirements like these beforehand and be prepared to abide them. Now, nothing will make you look more like a tourist than standing in front of St. Peter's Basilica in running shorts and a tank top and yelling at the Swiss Guard to let you in. Now, following simple guidelines like this will help you enrich your travel experience and help you respect the local country that you're visiting. This will also help you stand out from tourists as a respectful globetrotting gentleman. And we hope that today's video will help you look less like a tourist and more like a respectable traveling gentleman. Now let us know in the comment section if you'd also be interested in seeing videos about capsule wardrobes about particular destinations. Now today I'm wearing a natural colored long sleeve polo that I picked up from Ralph Lauren along with a pair of green trousers and a brown belt. I also have on a pair of brown leather dress shoes and of course finishing off the look with my Fort Belvedere socks. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these.